नमस्कार सुस्वागतम एवरी वन थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग टूडेज वेबिनार होस्टेड बाय कोकण मराठा ऑन्टरप्रनोर्स टू हेल्प अस इन आर एंडेवर फॉर एन आत्मनिर्भर कोकण मराठा समाज टुडे वी हैव विथ अस दी एस टीम प्रेजेंटर डॉक्टर कौस्तुभ धालगलकर हू विल गाइड अस विथ इज टॉक ऑन बिजनेस इनोवेशन सिंपल टूल्स विथ रियल लाइफ स्टोरीज डॉक्टर कौस्तुभ धालगलकर फाउंडेड थ्री कंपनीज फ्रॉम नाइनटीन नाइन्टी टू टू थाउजेंड फाइव इन द डोमेन ऑफ प्रोडक्टिविटी एनहेंसमेंट टेक्नोलॉजीज फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग He is an entrepreneur, an academician, and an innovation campaigner. Dr. Dhalgalkar is a visiting faculty at IIT Bombay, IIM Sirimur, ICT Mumbai, NMIMS, and V School, and has mentored more than 150 startups over the last decade, helping them scale up by implementing robust business models. Dr. Dhalgalkar consults large corporates like HP, Daimler India, Mercedes-Benz India, Citibank, Mahindra Group, Capgemini, Eaton. to name a few on how to enhance their innovation quotient he is a tedx speaker and has authored the book it's logical innovating profitable business models after the presentation there will be a q and a session on the topic with dr dhalgalkar so please post your questions on the registration link let us utilize this opportunity to get insights into business innovation with real world implications to help us in our day to day operations With that, I would like to hand it over to our expert, Dr. Kausub Dhalgalkar. Okay, thank you, Puneet. Uh, are all the participants uh, included in the this uh, in the present uh, here on the screen? Yeah, participants are uh, coming through YouTube. Okay, okay. So you okay. will not see the participants, but okay. participants are on. They are on. so i was just yeah. wondering because the number is yeah, yeah 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 okay great okay so thank you very much uh, punit and thank you uh, kokan maratha atmanirbhar bharat uh, community platform for calling me here and uh, giving me the opportunity to speak to you all so let me start a little bit with a small presentation that i have um yes now i hope it is visible properly uh that's the book that punit was talking about but basically what i am going to talk about is uh, that uh, this particular statement by our uh, prime minister apda ko avsar mein badalne ka avsar how do we convert a crisis into an opportunity uh, are there some examples etc what i will share with you are some some stories from my experiences Uh, my personal experiences as my as well as my clients experiences etc how they kind of tackled adversities and uh, identified opportunities and actually grew from those opportunities so uh, one of this story is about how a person went from doing job work a typical job work kind of a company uh, to a product ownership kind of a company i'm going to cite two examples here first one is a jewelry exporter uh, i am not deliberately given the original name for reasons uh, that he would not like to uh, this company uh, started somewhere in 92 uh, with the intent of exporting jewelry so over uh, 18 years from 1992 to about 16 years 2008 2009 these people had done uh, built a good business uh exporting their jewelry to various uh, you know these uh, brands in the world such as swarovski and prada and uh, you know all those kinds of david urman and those people mostly operating in the west european and the american market segment and then in 2008 this financial crisis struck and their entire business was destroyed for 6 uh, to 7 months there were hardly any orders and this person had three factories pretty much state of the art uh, involving uh, high tech machinery uh, operating out of sibs in mumbai and everything was just a stand still uh, but this man uh, at that time actually uh, rather than keeping putting his hands on his head actually started looking at uh, how he can move from a job worker to an actual product owner so he did started doing some research and i was also doing some consulting with him at that time and we sat down to how can we relook at the whole business 
because the whole business earlier was a B2B, business to business kind of a, 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 an entity wherein uh, he would export his jewelry to all these buyers who were actually big brands. So his name was not known to the customers who used to buy that jewelry. It used to go under the brand name of David Urban or Swarovski or Prada, etc., etc., etc. And suddenly this person was faced with uh, zero business. I will uh, uh, intersperse Marathi and English. So, Agdi Dokar Hagyun Baslauda to. And we were talking what to do next. So, gradually we came to a conclusion. We started asking the question Itke Varsha Apan Kai Kila? Atra Varsha Business Kai Kila? Uh, US and uh, Western European brands used to give them some designs and they used to do this at job work. Finally, this man said, why not go to the user directly? Because these people, intermediaries anyway, squeeze us out for payments, cash flow becomes a problem, all of that becomes a problem. So we started thinking, uh, fundamental question we started asking was, uh, what business are we in? And uh, we came to a conclusion after about two, three days of debate that, uh, you know, initial answers were we are in the jewelry business, we are in the exports business, we are in this business, that business, etc. But finally, when we put ourselves in the shoes of the customer, we realized that we are in the fashion business. Because why does a woman buy jewelry? A woman buys jewelry to look good. And that should actually be designed, defined as a business of fashion. And then uh, we started relooking at the whole business very differently. Uh, his market segment was 28 to 37 year old Western European or, West, or an American lady who used to buy that jewelry. So we started, we employed some research agency to understand that behavior there. And we figured out that uh, what does one question that we wanted to ask was what does fashion mean to this 27 to 38 year old woman, working woman? And we got answers like fashion means a fancy mobile phone and iPhone. Uh, fashion means uh, expensive leather bags like Louis Vuitton and uh, those variety. Fashion also means uh, uh, having a membership of a golf club. Fashion also means uh, fine dine restaurants and things like that. So we started wondering if we were to reach out to this lady, is the gold jewelry shop the only way to reach out to these ladies? Or are these also other sales channels that can be reached out? And uh, a li little more research into that uh, customer segment psyche revealed that almost 37% of her fashion shopping happens online way back in 2009-2010 that time. okay, 37% of fashion shopping happens online. And then the question was, uh, if we are also going to sell fashion to this lady, we should also be on that in that online space. But at that time, jewelry selling online was not really thought of, not really popular. And this person's jewelry pricing was somewhere between $1,200 to $1,500 per, per item. And uh, we thought this is going to be difficult for people to buy $1,200 to $1,500 items on, on, on uh, this thing, on, on credit card, on online. So this person actually showed the guts to actually relook at his entire product portfolio. And it took about 9 to 10 months by employing some designers to completely recreate his product portfolio in the price range of about $350 to $475. Why? Because our research told us that these ladies are not comfortable swiping a credit card of more than $500 for an online purchase. So this, with this insight, we all got together and completely recreated that product portfolio from down from $1,400, $1,500 to about $350 to $475. And this was launched uh, uh, on 15th of August uh, 2010. And within about five years, this person's business grew from about broadly, at that time, he was about 132 crores 
to about 450 crores in that space and in the out of the 450 crores 42 percent of his business started coming online now this according to me is a classic example of understanding the market putting yourselves in the shoes of the customer and then being ready to relook at the entire structure of the business most of the times what we do is we try to sell what we already have at such times of crisis and today's pandemic has brought up a similar kind of a even a, probably a more severe kind of a situation than it was back then in the financial crisis of 2008-2009 but the moral from here is uh, this individual was willing to go that extra mile to understand that end user and understand her so well that his experimentation also started yielding results so which is the focus that has to shift from maybe he was doing job work and how he moved to his own product ownership that's something that a lot of us in that engineering manufacturing space who are suppliers to major brands we really re need to relook at the business that we are into we also need to look at beyond our b2b lines what can we do in the ultimate user segment? What kinds of services we can give? What kind of products we can create to bypass that uh, B2B segment and probably get into a B2C kind of space, uh, which is where uh, the real, uh, so to say, the real, uh, real uh, revenues are. Uh, let me take another example. Uh, this is uh, my own example. We started uh, manufacturing these presses way back in 1991 and uh, initially uh, you know uh, we used to we also used to do job work so from 1990 to about 1991 uh, second half of 1991 we used to do a lot of job work for Siemens, Voltas, LNT, XYZ etc and uh, you know how these large companies treat us they take us for a jolly good ride 60 90 day credit period uh, payments at their mercy costing the last uh, rupee will be last paisa will be uh, debated upon and things like that so at one time when uh, i was visiting a factory in siemens uh, on one of the shop floor assembly lines i saw a press like this and just casually asked kya hai kai hai and he said e, impact press hai and this is used for punching holes in sheet metal and marking logos and small little assembly operations etc 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 and uh, I just thought, uh, I asked him, can I just take it for uh, maybe a week to understand what it is, etc. And uh, he said, Are, get pass banwala lage, lasa hoil, tasa hoil, uh, next time I'll hear baguya. But I mean, jara magets laglo then cha. And maybe to ek, do not hoda nantar the paperwork karun, the machine ala ham cha. And the cha nantar, what we realized was, can we, we thought that we can, why don't we make a product like this? Uh, and uh, kind of command the market rather than be dependent on these uh, you know, large companies to provide us with job work. And gradually it took us time, three, four months to re-engineer the whole thing, reverse engineer the whole thing, etc. And as you can see, the picture is very crude. Uh, I've taken to somewhere in 93, 94. Uh, you can see from the quality of the picture. And uh, 92 onwards... Uh, we 91 second half onwards we kind of started manufacturing these and uh, you know in the next one and a half years or so by 93 mid 93 or so uh, from the customer type of customers that used to come to us we somewhere realized that uh, we were selling presses yes but customers were not coming to me to buy presses they used to come to me to enhance the productivity of their assembly lines to reduce manpower on their assembly lines to reduce effort on their assembly lines so in short press they used to come to actually enhance the productivity of their assembly assembly lines he amala jawaja deed varsha lagla kadayla ani tyachanantar the next question was immediately what is it that they use for enhancing the productivity of their assembly lines other than these presses. The natural question, what else do they need to enhance the productivity of the assembly lines? From that, automatically answers came, they need indexing tables for motion control, 
for productivity enhancement they need automatic feeders they need some special purpose custom made equipment they need some linear motion controllers for feeding systems etc positioning systems etc they need uh, uh, pick and place units for automation within their small assembly shops etc and then with this understanding we created a kind of a collaboration between suppliers of these indexing tables auto feeders pick and place units linear motion controllers etc and went to customers with a complete end to end solution so from just being a press manufacturer we gradually became a platform for assembly line automation for rather an end to end one window clearance uh, shop for Uh, anybody who wanted to enhance the productivity of their assembly lines and it took uh, us about 2 years to actually make this happen initially most of it all of it was outsourced we used to be an integrator only and later on then we realized that some of the manufacturers that we had collaborated with were not up to the mark quality was not good etc so we started eliminating we started doing some things in house etc etc and uh, in about 5 uh, years or so uh we actually reached a position where uh, in 97 98 we had actually put some end to end assembly line automation on the tata indica plant also where indica was manufactured and the first uh, first assembly line was put up there so point being that uh, if we had stuck to these presses maybe we would have made some pneumatic presses hydraulic presses mechanical presses etc 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 but because we always ask the question that what is it the customer is coming to me for he or she is not coming to me for buying a press he or she is coming to solve his automation and productivity problems and that's where these answers came logically and uh, by about 2001 2002 we actually had an offer from one german company and one uh, american company to for a tie up with us for whatever reasons for agree, uh, legal uh, reasons etc those agreements did not go through that's a different issue but uh, we actually reached that level now i don't think we would have reached that level had we just stuck to the press thinking that oh we are press manufacturers and we should be the best at it yes we should you should be the best at what you do yes but what else does the customer need my existing customer need we were constantly looking for that and that's where all these ideas came and we actually became a pretty pretty much of a well known integrator in that space of assembly line automation so moral is that go beyond what you are making try to check what the customer is seeking from you that basic underlying uh, need of that customer that we are trying to solve once you crack that then a lot of other avenues open up you know other product lines service lines etc open up and today uh, more than ever uh, you know uh, the approach should be that uh, with your existing product or service we se- we have set up a customer segment go deep into that customer segment constantly keep analyzing what that customer segment needs other than what you offer and when you uncover those needs try to create a platform of collaborators who will help you satisfy those needs that means rope in people from people who provide those other services in addition to what you do and try to capture that customers need end to end and that's what platform thinking is all about and that's what today's uh, scaling up actually happens on platforms so you control the platform because you are in touch with that customer and rope in collaborators to set, keep satisfying the other needs that keep coming up from that customer segment and that's a much faster way to scale up than uh, you know trying to do everything on their own on your own so that's one thing now this is uh, i told you about two success stories let me also talk about uh, some failures uh, in 1995 uh, you know these impact presses uh, uh from 92 onwards we were manufacturing and one of our major buyers was uh, anchor anchor switches because uh, a lot of small components have to be riveted and assembled in that you know switch that is there on the wall and uh, these fellows were big customers for us and uh, somewhere in 94 95 they were uh, signing a collaboration with the korean company called debu electronics uh 
uh, all of you must have heard div the uh, car companies also the clo and the matis also that that's that group so they we they div electronics washing machines and all that that electronics arm was signing a joint venture uh, with anchor to enter india they were anchor limited and for that these anchor people uh, wanted to upgrade their factories because these koreans had a lot of stringent uh, controls over quality and things like that so testing assembly line uh, automation x y z so that also gave us a boost in that automation space and we had developed some pretty much high tech testing equipment for the switches you know with a lot of displays various parameters being checked pneumatically operated the uh, pressure on the switches for testing of some 20000 cycles would exactly mimic the our finger pressure and the softness and you know a lot of uh, r&d we had done and created some fancy machines for testing and uh, uh, anchor uh, had told us that we would need about 89 to 95 such machines for their various assembly lines of switches uh, and uh, we had uh, made some prototypes and the relationship with anchor was really very good uh, we never had any payment problems etc 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 so actually we put up another factory investing some of our own money uh, in the uh, uh, with the you know uh, expectation of that all that business coming in and uh, we were all set invested our own money just waiting for the final po to be signed etc two three prototypes were ready x y z uh, probably more in fact uh, i think five or six prototypes were uh, ready and uh, each one uh, costing about at that time about you know 1995 96 it was costing about in the range of about 90000 to a lakh of rupees so if you translate it to today's value it would uh, run in a few crores so it was a big order for us and uh, we had made a really really fancy good high tech testing equipment and what happened was this devu and anchor their joint venture never happened and we were in a complete soup at that time now we had developed the technology so we naturally thought that you know we will sell similar machines to other switch manufacturers in india there are lots of switch manufacturers are there in india and uh, but all of them are not of the standard of anchor not of the size of anchor back then there were lots of small manufacturers you know small family businesses etc uh, and we said we will sell this uh, beautifully manufactured uh, testing equipment to all of these people and we will uh, you know recover our costs in that new plant new factory that we had set up and uh, what we tried to do was we tried to sell that high tech solution to all these other manufacturers which these other manufacturers were just not willing to buy and we were constantly telling them uh, you know our marketing pitch was are ye korean company ke liye banaya hai aisa hai waisa hai tumhara aisa testing ekdam top class ho jayega you know isi if you are applying for an isi ma isi mark this will be great and that and x y z none of them bought anything in the meanwhile some of our competitors actually made a very simple motorized cam based testing machine which used to just press left right left right left right etc and at probably at something like one fourth of the cost that we were trying to sell it for and we completely lost that market and uh, we ended up with a huge loss with that factory set up and all that happening and uh, moral from there is we tried to sell what we had we did not try to make what the customer needed what anchor needed we made but once anchor was out of the picture the other manufacturers were just not willing to spend that kind of money they just wanted some testing to satisfy the ertl uh, lab uh, standards etc and it was taken care of very easily by a very very small machine very very cheap machine simple cam auto operated motorized machine so when we tried to sell what we had made and did not worry did not bother about trying to find out what the customer really needs that was one major reason uh, on high side i feel that was a major reason for our failure at that time now having talked about these two examples uh, uh, what should be our focus on obvious reason obvious answer is 
customer, customer, and customer. Now, how and why uh, we have spoken about. So I am going to talk about uh, understanding the customer at the last mile. What does, how does the customer behave? How does the customer use our product at the last mile in his or her context? Now, uh, that's, there, there, let me take some, some kind of examples. And, uh, you know, I will talk about uh, some students who identified some opportunities. Uh, and the way they went about their understanding of the user research is, is interesting. That's why I'm sharing this uh, particular thing. Uh, one, uh, you know, this is in 2013, uh, 14, uh, end of 2013 or so. Uh, in one of these, you know, uh, courses that I take on product development or uh, new business model creation, innovation strategy, etc. Um, one assignment that I give to students is common across all the courses is what I call as an empathy fortnight. Empathy fortnight means simple. If there is a class of 50, I would divide them into, say, 10 groups of five each. And uh, each group would be given one specific customer segment. And the uh, brief to the students is, Udche Padra Divas, just go and interact with that customer segment to find out their real problems, some problems which are not solved as of now. They don't have a solution. They are still unsolved problems. Uh, so that is the intent of this 15-day uh, fortnight, uh, that exercise. And one such group, I had given a topic like topic uh, customer segment of deaf and mute housewives. Housewives, uh, not working ladies. Deaf and mute housewives. And uh, these uh, students came back to me after about uh, four to five days saying, we have thought of a lot of ideas for... Uh, uh, these people, uh, speech and challenge, uh, uh, visually challenged, I mean, uh, speech and uh, hearing impaired uh, individuals. What sort of ideas we have but the moment we Google it up, we figure out that this uh, product is made. So we haven't been able to find out anything new. So I said, uh, I didn't tell you to find out any new solution. I just asked you to find out problems which are unsolved as of now. So then they said, sir, uh, that customer segment cannot speak, cannot hear. So it is very difficult to interact with them. So uh, we said, uh, I said, uh, let us find out if we can find such people from our family circles itself. Now, as you, as Indians, our close family and friend circle includes at least 50 to 60 families that we know quite well. So we said, uh, Five of them and me, six, all six to put six put together. We said, let us sit down around the table and write down the names of families that we know closely from our friend and social circle. And, uh, you know, each one of us writing down 50, 60 family names. Six of us had about 280 to 300 family names written down in the next 10, 15 minutes. And then we went through each of those families and family members to find whether there were any ladies who were housewives and were deaf and mute. And we found two ladies who fit that bill. So the next thing was, uh, let us go and uh, interact with these people. Let us find out what their issues are. Now, uh, the initial thought was, let us go when this lady is free, when she will be able to interact and communicate to us what her problems are, etc., etc., etc. Then uh, another thought came. Then we, when she is free, she will not understand her regular life and her problems. So we said we will go at a time when she is busy with her household activity and when she is alone at home. Because if there are people at home, there will be help to her and her real problems will not come out. So we chose a time between morning 9.30 to 11 because by that time, Children have gone off to school, husband has gone off to office, and this lady is managing her house. And to add to that extreme, we also chose the days when her housemaid was also absent. Because we wanted her to be doing all her activity on her own so that her real problems will come out when there is no help. And the brief to the students was don't go help her, do not help her in any activity, just go and observe. 
Now, entry into these households was not difficult for us because they were known from our family circle. Uh, more importantly, the I am stressing the time that we chose very smartly was a time when she was alone and busy. No housemaid help also on those days because they were on leave. And we noticed very simple things that when the doorbell would ring, this lady would not be able to respond. When she would put something in the microwave, set the timer and go to another room to do something else, the microwave timer would time out and keep on beeping. This lady would not be able to hear and uh, come back to switch it off. Another interesting thing we saw was that if she put something in the pressure cooker, then she would not leave the kitchen. She would roam around in the kitchen constantly looking at the pressure cooker. Why? We interpreted was that if she left the room and went to some other room, and if the pressure cooker is shitty, wazli, whistle, so she was worried that food will get overcooked. So she was standing there constantly walking up and down and constantly looking at that uh, pressure cooker to see keva whistle hona. Uh, now, with these three, four things and other things also, I have narrated only three findings, but a lot of other things also came up. Uh, with these three things, uh, these students uh, created a very simple wristband. Now, this picture is of the very first prototype that they created. So, it looks crude, but I have deliberately kept the picture of the first prototype. It was 3D printed in my lab itself. Uh, it was, you know, there was a small Bluetooth uh, module embedded in it, Bluetooth protocol module embedded in it. And all the home appliances in the house also had a similar Bluetooth module embedded in it. And when, say when the doorbell would ring, the wristband in that lady's hand would vibrate and a red LED would glow on it. If the uh, microwave timer timed out, the wristband in the lady's hand would vibrate and a bluish green LED would glow on it. If the pressure cooker third whistle went off, then the wristband would vibrate and a blue LED would glow on it. So you can see different colored LEDs there. A very, very simple product. Now, it this product, it became a lot more aesthetic later on, etc. It turned into a completely different product. That's, a, that's another story. But my point is that where did this idea come from? This idea came from the time that these students spent in the household in the actual situation of that lady in the situation that she is in at all times when she's busy when she's alone when she doesn't have help that's the time when the real problem came up and that's what i mean by last mile user connect many times we create products we create services but we do not many times we don't bother to see to check how is that product going to be used in the actual customer surround circumstances, environment, etc.? And many times that's where uh, customer adoption doesn't happen, product adoption doesn't happen. People uh, don't use your product because we have missed some feature which they would have liked to have. Now that's what I mean by last mile user connect. All right. Uh, so observing the customer in his or her surroundings. Is, is really important. Uh, let me, I have given you a story of some students. Now, let us take an example of this large company called Nokia. Way back in 2000 or so, Nokia was number one in uh, India and all over the world, mobile phone company. Apple, phone, iPhone did not exist. Uh, Samsung was absolutely new in that space. LG was new, etc. Nokia was the king in that space. Their <clears throat> aim was to put a Nokia phone into the hands of every single Indian. That was their uh, kind of uh, vision. And uh, to accomplish that, they will have had to sell a Nokia phone to every single Indian, including metros, metro city, uh, metropolitan cities, as well as villages. Now, selling a mobile phone to a metro city uh, individual is not difficult. But selling a mobile phone to villagers is not going to be easy way back in 2000, huh? which would not have been easy, 2000, 2001. So these people actually created small teams to go and stay in villages to understand that whole lifestyle of a villager and not just a morning to evening visit. Stay means stay for five, ten days. And one simple insight that came out of these stays was that in a village, if a villager 
went to some other town or some other village and if he or she would come back would be expected to come back late after sunset he or she would carry a battery a torch in his hand women in the village would get up before sunrise to go to the river bank or the fields for the to- for their toilet etc because there were no toilets in the village and electricity was also a problem and hence they would carry a battery or a torch in their hands so with this they kind of these people figured out that if we have to put a mobile phone in every villager's hand it is going to compete with a torch so why not combine a torch into a mobile phone and that's what the birth of this nokia 1100 model if you remember nokia 1100 model had a torch in it also so now this idea came because people these people this company spent time with the end user understanding the end users lifestyle understanding how they use products etc and that's where this idea came from uh, that's what i mean by last mile user connect now uh, to end it uh, this i'm going to tell you the story of uh, goli vada pav somebody like you and me how he started business etc goli vada pav you must have see in some of you must have eaten also uh, started in 2008 in bombay uh, he started 42 outlets on day 1 in the city of bombay 42 outlets in the day uh, on day 1 is not easy for a startup <clears throat> how did he manage it very smartly he identified these ra mill colony distribution centers you know these at roadside corners we have these milk distribution booths owned by ra milk colony he noticed that milk business is happens happens maximum from 4:30 in the morning to 7:38 in the morning 4:30 am to 7:38 am after that these booths are empty or at some booths they sell some ra milk colony products which hardly have any sale you know the cheese and things like that and people they it is not marketed well so people don't go and buy there so he approached aramil colony and said that from 9 9:30 in the morning till 11 11 o'clock in the night if you allow me to use your booths to sell my vada pav i will pay you some rental income and that was a lucrative offer for are because their booths were anyway not making money beyond that 4:30 to 8, 8 am in the morning that busy time other time they used to be empty and their revenue was hardly anything so this guy managed to cut his cost as well as give some additional revenue to ra milk colony so see how he created a win win situation otherwise for a startup to start 42 outlets on day 1 of their operation is not easy so this guy managed it like that now what happened was uh, if you remember in 2008 uh, 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 nav maharashtra nav nirman sena raj thakre's party uh, their main uh, uh, andolan was uh, non marathi vendors should not be operating on the streets of bombay and a lot of you know vandalizing etc was happening at that time and three or four of his stalls this goli vada pav stalls also were vandalized because this guy this owner is uh, venkatesh ayer tamil guy two three stalls of his uh, got vandalized and uh, this guy said forget it i don't want to get into any of these politics uh, he just withdrew from bombay operation mumbai chi sagli band keli dani ani pune la gela sangli satara nagpur ahmedabad jaipur udaipur lucknow bangalore etc to spread kela there now again another lesson for a startup to suddenly overcome this problem and be able to expand so rapidly smartly then kai kela hota ki mcdonalds mcdonalds everybody knows mcdonalds cha kitchen barobar tene tie up kela hota mcdonalds has a centralized kitchen somewhere in badlapur or kalyan where it is an automated kitchen so all these mcdonalds patty wagare ashe assembly line varna nikta so tane adhich setup network karun thevla hota mcdonalds barobar giving them a proposal saying that in your idle time can i use the capacity of your automated uh, assembly line 
सो ही गोली वडापावचे वडे ऍक्च्युली असेंबली लाईन वर न येतात बटाटे वडे सो दोज हु हॅव विजिटेड अ गोली वडापाव स्टॉल यू विल हॅव नोटिस दॅट ही वडा बटाटा वडा परफेक्टली राऊंड अँड स्लाईटली फ्लॅट बिकॉज दे कम आउट ऑन अ असेंबली लाईन नाव अँड मॅकडॉनल्ड्स त्या पॅटीचा बर्गर असतो पण त्याच असेंबली लाईन वरून येतो अँड देन इट इज प्री फ्राईड अँड देन इट इज पुट इट इज मेंटेन अॅट अ मायनस थर्टी टू डिग्रीज कोल्ड चेन and then transfer transported to all the outlets that mcdonalds has across the country so that uh, cold chain also is managed by mcdonalds vendor so this goli vada pav venkatesh ayer cracked the deal with mcdonalds to allow him to use that cold chain also so that because when he withdrew from bombay he was able to quickly spread across to these cities had he not had this scientific supply chain in collaboration with mcdonalds and he is a small guy he was a small guy cracker deal with mcdonalds took him ta- time but he persisted with it and actually made it happen had he not had this kind of a structure this supply chain control i don't think he would have been able to expand uh, rapidly across the country in uh, in such short time now in 3 years from 2008 to 2011 uh, he spread to all these cities that i mentioned to you about and bombay no operations in those three years at all because this mns activity was quite high at that time and i had heard this venkatesh ayer giving a talk in one of the seminars i was really impressed with uh, with the way he had structured his whole whole business a very scientific approach to a simple uh, object like vada pav now uh, this had impressed me and i had you know in at that time i was teaching in some uh, college i was taking a, a module on entrepreneurship or something like that and i called him to give a talk to the students and in a two and a half hour free willing talk he explained all of this and you know, we were all very impressed with the whole thing and then i was sitting with him in the college cafeteria so we having some tea or coffee and at that time uh, he said that uh, now in the last three years this mns maharashtra navnirman sena andolan has kind of come down and uh, my supply chain is also running like a smooth well oiled machine with the centralized kitchen and control over the cold chain and uh, coupled with the fact that this andolan has gone down it is now is a good time for me to relaunch in bombay and then he looked at me and said uh, i will not come back to bombay only with vada pav i will come back with some additional food uh, menu around the vada pav and uh, i have been able to figure out what additional items i will serve with vada pav but one question that i have not been able to answer is vada pav barobar kai drinks thevaychi stall madhe various uh, whatever cold drink soft drink whatever xyz beverages what to keep so that is a question that i need an answer to and he asked me uh, will you uh, would you mind uh, you know uh, doing this research helping me with this research i was so impressed with this fellow i said without thinking i said yes normally when these kinds of projects come i float it around uh, to my student uh, uh, community i floated an email stating the brief etc and uh, these guys uh, some about 11 student joined me in this whole uh, exercise and uh, uh, you know by the time uh, this was about the summer of uh, 2012 month of april may 2012 uh, we were wondering how to now conduct this research uh, initially the whole uh, option of you know we will do some questionnaires and we will conduct a market survey on the road side asking people what would you prefer to drink along with vada pav at a vada pav stall you know but this direct questioning method never really gives any answer because people don't quite answer uh, honestly in a questionnaire format and things like that so we were wondering we need to figure out a different way to actually get this uh, information so after a lot of brainstorming we came up with a unique method we said we went to this person and said let us do you are you are relaunching in mumbai so let us do a sampling free sampling exercise across bombay uh, so we identified three locations in the city of mumbai one outside church gate station to capture the office going crowd second we identified uh, on the western side of andheri station uh, 
because there is this lot of this SVKM, NMIMS student crowd. There are 14-15 uh, colleges in that area uh, under the SVKM uh, umbrella, which means there are about 20-25 thousand students floating around in that area all the time. Then there is Bhavans College with another 3-4 thousand students uh, floating around the uh, SPJN and all of that. Milake. And uh, plus we have the slightly upper middle class section of Lokhandwala complex outside Andheri station area to capture that kind of a crowd. And the third, we uh, set up a stall opposite Bombay Central Station just outside the ST bus stand, state transport bus stand. Because state transport bus stand, uh, uh, Janewala public, slightly uh, lower middle class or so, we, we wanted to capture that also. So we set up these stalls and uh, anybody who would walk into the stall would get a free vada pav to eat under one condition. That after having eaten the vada pav, you will have to play a game with us. So we had created a stall which had two sections. At the front, the person eats it. At the back, he is made to play or she is made to play a game. So after having eaten a hot spicy vada pav, we used to take that person at the back to play a game. And we had set up a very simple game. Uh, you know, the ring fake a game of stana, upper lana stana, jatre made, mele made, kelle, kelle, la, eto. The ring, uh, to throw a ring on some objects. And if you can put your ring exactly around the object, you can, you can take that object home. So, what we had done was we had kept 11 beverages tea, coffee, Sprite, lemonade, X, Y, Z, cold coffee, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and we gave the person who had eaten that vada pav hot spicy vada pav, a bunch of 10 rings and told them that you throw a ring. If you can put a ring on any of the drink, you can get to drink it free of cost. And our students were given a brief that just keep on noting down who is throwing how many rings on which drink, how many times is a person trying to uh, get that drink, etc., etc. Et and we, over the next, you know, almost 10, 11 days, we captured 904 samples across these three stalls. And uh, in the hot month of May, what we had expected that the most preferred drink would be something cold, but it came out to be masala chai, masala tea in the month of May. Now, this is what I just wanted to share the whole story of Goli Bada Pao, what how he did it. And this last exercise of understanding what people really want, not by asking people, but by putting them in an actual situation, simulating it in a very creative manner. We made a person play a game. Why? Because when a person is playing a game, that person's competitive spirit is at the highest and a lot of psychological guards are down. So the real choices and preferences come out. So when they were throwing a ring, they were wanting to win that drink. And what they wanted was what they would try the first. So all that weighted average came out and the result was very surprising. It was masala chai. So there are unique ways in which uh, we need to understand our consumers uh, in depth so that we don't make mistakes while we launch our products. With that, I think I will stop. And all these things are... Uh, a lot and a lot more are there in this book, uh, which which recently got published three months back in the month of uh, May. Uh, you, you may maybe some of you can lay your hands on it. Anyway, with this, uh, can we open it up for questions or anything like that? Yes, thank you, Doctor. Uh, that was a wonderful. Uh, you gave wonderful insights and an excellent presentation. Uh, we will now go ahead with a few questions from our attendees. But before that, I would like to uh, ask you to differentiate between uh, the general R&D that goes on and innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, R&D is uh, necessary for innovation. Uh, but in R&D, a lot of ideas come up, a lot of products come up. Uh, when they are applied to take care of a problem that a customer faces, that is the time it becomes an innovation. So R&D is absolutely necessary, without which new products will not come up. But R&D also should keep a focus on user needs. What is the market needing? When yeah. that R&D can be productized, that is when it becomes, that is when it can be called as an innovation. Yeah. Uh, also, a repeated question that is coming uh, in for... Uh, from our community is, uh, 
how do you see agriculture going forward in today's age because the background is uh, most of our people are living in metros not just in indian metros but uh, in countries abroad and they have a lot of ancestral land still available and people would want to utilize it to the maximum so mm. in, uh, in today's day and age of uh, digital marketing and uh, uh, innovation what would what would your thoughts be on uh, innovation for the agricultural side uh, let us look at it uh, in two ways in the sense that one is the producer the farmer and the second is the uh, intermediary who brings the products to the markets so yeah. there is this middleman and that you know the supply chain now at both places uh, quite a few things are happening uh, at uh, the middleman stage in this corona pandemic a lot of these middlemen have just been bypassed so there is a lot of uh, technology coming in that whole supply chain companies like kisan connect and sayagri farms etc have brought food directly from farms into our houses so that's that's a scope there for and it is still an uh, 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 what do you say it is still an uh, you know uh, uh, not a totally explored market so there's a lot of potential there so that's one one piece and uh, at the manufacturing that is at the uh, actual agriculture growers level farmers level i think a lot of automation needs to be brought in because what happens is farming is inefficient in our country because uh, land holding is kind of uh, dispersed uh, a lot of farmers have small pieces of land they can't afford automation etc so a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, collaboration collaboration yes absolutely and by collaborating being able to afford mechanization also will happen uh, like for example you know, one of my uh, students uh, he created a very simple uh, device to control motor pumps through a mobile phone uh, five years yeah. back five or six years back very simple device nothing uh, fancy about it. but he went and spent a lot of time with these farmers and then they un he understood that are motor pump ki power jate he hota te hota then he kept on making modifications in that uh, in that hardware of his ke power jate teva pan to time eliminate hon timer reset hon you know also to kiti pani pahije tevda barobar te janar te but power ahe nahi hai aat ta sari power ali x y z so ashe kay kay modification karat karat gela to and then now he has found a big uh, need from this uh, from uh, the government last 5 years government wants to control subsidies water varti subsidy khup waste hote electricity varti subsidy government chi khup waste hote because there is no way that the government can monitor kutla farmer ni kiti electricity consume keli so n block subsidies are there so now with this device he has built a cloud platform to monitor the consumption of electricity also which mm. gives control to the government to give only that much subsidy on the utilized uh, power not n block then yeah. similarly for water consumption also okay ani tacha nantar ata water he sagal jala ata government also wants information about uh, the soil quality in uh, at various farms to be able to give kind of to give the right kind of insurance schemes for specific farmers so it is now becoming customized to the land quality and insurance uh, premium it is going to be related now this mm. fellow smartly saw all this and actually collaborated with soil uh, uh, sensor Testing companies fund. and you know other companies and now he controls the platform through which a lot of hardware Uh, can be installed and a lot of inputs can be taken up and uh, he is now uh, dealing with governments at large scales when his minimum order today is about 4000 5000 such pieces you know hardware mm. pieces and the whole uh, so now he is also tying up with reliance jio and other mobile service providers to even uh, create that platform on a much much bigger scale so ashe je mechan automation opportunities uh, not necessarily in growing but in uh, the other things also which will help you know enhance the productivity of our farming uh, are there and this government i feel is 
doing a lot of things because they want to do it cost effectively purvi pan subsidies jayche pan tyachi effectiveness kiti asaycha maiti nahi so now these people want to check the effectiveness of these subsidies also hmm optimal utilization that's where a lot of opportunities lie hmm uh, i will just like to remind our viewers you can post your questions so that we can add, uh, address them to dr dhargalkar and then he can answer them uh in the meanwhile another uh, uh, question that was coming to mind was uh, for example let's take two or three generations there is uh, someone who is right out of college yeah there is someone who is a professional with say 10 or 12 years of experience and uh, another person who has a established business uh, say of uh, 20 25 years now what would be your advice to each of these individuals in terms of you know uh, uh, having an innovative approach to uh, their ideas or to how to become an entrepreneur manje the person with uh, 20 25 years experience is his uh, sorry uh, 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 he is an entrepreneur he is a business person but then how do how what would be your advice so that he can bring in the innovation or the thought process required so that he can better his uh, business uh, my general observation in the msme space in india is that you know we have a uh, we are suppliers to larger companies True. so we have somehow got it that mindset of being a supplier but hmm. uh, you know to really make a difference we need to think like a product creator There is a difference between these two mindsets. You know, supplier mindset means that if the order is coming, we need to target the order. Two to three months to complete the order, five days to give it. So we are very operational efficiency. We are very focused on MSME hmm. space. Uh, we need to kind of change that mindset towards a product ownership kind of a mindset. And that, for that to come, we need to really understand what our what that end user also needs. You know. because uh, in this pandemic situation now if that uh, company to whom you supply to suddenly lo- loses business and down the line sagale supply chain madle msme are completely shattered no that is mm. what has happened today in the last 5 6 months that is what has happened so and uh, we really need to get over that by trying to look at user needs and see what kinds of uh, things we can do so Uh, expecting new results with the same thing that we had been doing before february is not going to happen we need to mm-hmm. relook at the whole thing uh, yeah. so so that's uh, something which i feel any any another opportunity that i see is you know lot of this supply chain uh, is broken down khup vendors ashe ahet jencha kade kamach nahi ahet so idle capacity is khup ahet so can we smartly look at creating collaborative win win situations where we can use each other sidle capacities and you know create something directly to the end user correct that is interesting collaboration is the key word today yes 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 yes, yes. Uh, what about professionals say professionals who have experience of uh, 10 15 years how would you guide them uh, to better their careers or to sh- make a shift from being a professional to a business owner or an entrepreneur once again uh, i mean uh, a lot of professionals are also losing their jobs facing pay cuts and are contemplating entrepreneurship now i mean mm-hmm. yeah so the focus has to be on understanding the user many times what i have seen in these you know professionals is that they are proficient with some technology and they want to create a solution around that technology so and they forget the end user at mm. that time they they are trying to very you know they are very good with their technology and they are building some technology without really understanding the use case finally mm. the product service kai karta the use kasa hota so the focus has to be on the user first technology later that mm. so that the connect has to be be there between the technology and the customer so kutlai kai product service develop karta na you visualize the use case how that product application kay ahe hmm. and then look at what appropriate technologies can be used for which you will have to collaborate for which you will have to have some co-founders 
you will have to give away some equity to somebody who is good at that particular mm. technology and not necessarily what we started out with you know mm. so that has to be uh, smartly created i feel uh, a specific uh, question from bina gaukar from kalwa uh, she says we are the manufacturers of open and closed mouth barrels which are used for chemical uh, chemicals paints fruits oils etc uh where can we focus on for expanding our business any thoughts <laughs> um, i think uh, if you give a very good idea then maybe she will approach you for investment <laughs> i i mean honestly it would be unfair of me to talk about that business because uh, i don't know exactly what that business is so they are barrel manufacturers so so they must be having control over the uh, molding or something like that are these hdp plastics or what material there is so maybe uh, if the barrel business is not doing well if the offtech uh, is not there then maybe relook at the uh, uh, at the final product and see what you can you need to change your molds to make something else which has a demand in the market maybe i mean we have a general mm. answer but uh, that's how i would uh, start looking at okay uh, another question uh, from uh, ravi kiran and i will uh, twist it a little so that it becomes more generic uh, you have helped more than 150 startups so in your words what would be key factors or key parameters to uh, business growth to business growth yeah uh, as i said uh, some time back that thought of thinking in terms of platforms needs to mm. be embedded and you know a typical entrepreneur starts with a product mm. and uh, we skip we sell it to a specific customer segment mm. and uh, we go deep into that customer segment and there has to be a constant attempt to understand the other needs of that customer segment other than what you are satisfying with your own product so keep noting that and to begin with you may not have the capacity to serve those needs but collaborate so that you can give a complete end to end offering to that customer and gradually build a platform on which other collaborators can come and but you control the platform so that you give an end to end experience to the customer end to end problem solving for the customer and that's where you build platforms even when i talked about that uh, machine tool uh, Uh, company of ours 92 wala that's what we actually did we created a platform where we kind of became an integrator and a one window clearance for the customer mm, because otherwise the customer used to go to five six different uh, suppliers and then integrate at his or her end themselves and mm. face a lot of problems delays etc so we took away that pain from the customer on to us to begin with when we collaborated we the margins were not great maybe 10 15% margins on integrating was there in the beginning but as we became better we started doing a lot of things in house uh, quality standards went up much more and the margins automatically increased later on so yeah. that platform thinking uh, somewhere we need to embed in our heads and that's yes, first to identify and then to control yes and control also not rigid but because uh, in the because you become the face to the customer correct and constantly identify what else do they need uh vaibhav naik from mumbai has asked another question uh does incremental work also amount to innovation because uh, innovating could be time consuming and capital uh, intensive uh, what could be the way around it i mean it, innovation can be incremental also so there is nothing like always it has to be breakthrough mm. any continuous improvement also is innovation so so uh, getting better uh, day by day nobody should say that that is not good just waiting for a big breakthrough to come uh, is also quite stupid but you need we need to be open to take those leaps And yeah it's a matter of attitude no there it's it's i mean risk in the sense that if you are constantly in touch with the end user with the user 
you are automatically reducing the risk of failure also true yeah so i mean i wouldn't say that there is anything wrong with incremental changes of course they are, without incremental changes big breakthrough changes also will not happen yeah acha coming back to your uh, point of product ownership na uh, and uh, with, with, what is evident is uh, as you rightly said a lot of uh, small sm uh, small scale businesses and uh, medium scale enterprises are job shops or yes. are uh, tier 2 or tier 3 vendors to yes. bigger oems so uh, their whole uh, business or their uh, thought process towards profitability has been always thinking of the marketing margin or uh, sorry sorry not the marketing margin but the actual uh, job work and the margin that you earn on that efficiency oriented yes efficiency oriented but when you say you also have to think of the product side and take ownership of the product yeah. then they will have to also think about the marketing margins because unless and until a product is marketed uh, it will be difficult for them to uh, have that number of sales on their own so how Absolutely. how would you yeah how would you uh, uh make it easier for individuals or uh, small businesses to understand ki understand the importance of marketing margins yeah absolutely agreed so that's where uh, i mean when you when you are owning a product you will have to market it and sell it also on your own uh, yeah. that's where that's where some interesting collaborations need to be figured out uh, with marketing channels uh today uh, with uh, say for example you know uh, times of india times of india if your idea is good uh, they will invest in your company but not direct cash but they will take care of all the publicity pr etc etc for a certain amount of stake in your company so there are interesting models uh, for uh, collaborating with marketing partners uh, coming up today like the one i said so those kinds of things need to be explored yeah true and the uh, the promoters or the business owners have to also understand ki when you make a shift from being a job shop yes your margins are different it is reliant on efficiency but also when you have uh, entering the marketplace with the products you have to also have appropriate allocation of funds for marketing and marketing expenses and there there will be different uh, margins for each and every operation yeah and uh, doing it on your own alone is is difficult so we need to have that mindset of collaboration yeah so that you know, that is a little little difficult uh, to uh, let to, me you know uh, way back a uh, 99 वगैरे असेल 99 ची स्टोरी आहे आम्ही हे एसपीएम स्पेशल परपज मशीन बनवायचो त्याला त्याला कॉम्पिटिशन यूज्ड टू कम फ्रॉम जर्मन मशीन्स which used to be about 4 to 5 times our cost so right. that way they were not our competition but machines which used to come from taiwan used to be just about 15 20% more than our cost and that used to mm. be our competition so we had you know what we had done was we sent some inquiries to some taiwanese manufacturers etc and uh, in the in the uh, guise of a customer i went to their factories you know they invited us to before placing an order to see their factory etc and i had an appointment with three different companies on three different days hmm ani pehle divshi ala tancha ek executive gaadit basun ghevun gela office madhe nela desh this is our design section then he drove me to another place this is our casting foundry then he took me to another place this is our machine shop then he took me to another place this is where we uh, uh, you know fabricate all our control systems and things like that so teen char tikane ghevun gela Uh, to show me the whole setup next day with the other uh, uh, other company similar thing they came took me to their various outlets job shop casting foundry xyz machine shop and on the third day now on the third day i realized that out of these four or five outlets that they would take me to every day that means totally we had seen about 10 11 12 outlets out of these four were common the casting foundry was common their uh, uh, electronic their machine shop among the two was common etc 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 now what does this mean this <laughs> means at the front they were showing that they were competing against each other but at the back end they were like a syndicate correct <laughs> and that's how they were cutting their costs 
and that's how they were also sharing their marketing expenses also mm. <laughs> so that ye collaboration aple india madhe yaylaas pahije ajun parant mala ho na तर त्याच्यासाठी थोडा एक विचार आपला बदलावा बदलावा पाहिजे अच्छा वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम किशोर नाईक फ्रॉम थाने वॉट ही सेज इज इन माय बिझनेस अपार्ट फ्रॉम द प्रमोटर्स थिंकिंग टू आयडेंटिफाय न्यू प्रोडक्ट्स वुड यू ऍडवाइज प्रोफेशनल कन्सल्टन्स टू बी हायर्ड इधर टू टेस्ट वन्स आयडियाज बिफोर इन्करिंग कॉस्ट ऑन लॉन्च ऑर इन्करिंग कॉस्ट ऑन द लॉन्चिंग द आयडियाज ऍज professional well known names that you would want to uh, professional consultants will help not always because mm-hmm. you understand your business the best and i think before kind of fully developing the idea i think at a small scale small level you should test with your customer mm-hmm. because that is the first uh, you know the first proof any consultant will give you fancy advice uh, but unless you try it with your customer so create a small pool of you know customers who are willing to experiment with you and be very open to them open with them ke, and transparent me pehlendas banoto hai can we mm. try i am ready if something doesn't go well i am there to provide you service give that confidence and along with customers if you create these things then they become even more robust you know i yeah. think very importantly this small set of 10 15 customers then become your big advocates they are your biggest marketing tools later word mm. of mouth publicity ke udakari deta ta she shuruvati che customers because you have built a very transparent and a trustworthy relation trusting relationship with these people no? correct and also jasa ata uh, integration of upstream and downstream Mm-hmm. through collaboration you have uh, pointed out that is the most important in today's uh, economies of scale i feel yeah so one question from uh, dr uh, jagdish rani from baramati uh, is it that research on customers uh, desire is a way to bypass the investment or promotion of the product should agri entrepreneurship adopt this strategy no i didn't get it sorry uh, is it that research on customers desires uh-huh. is a way to bypass the investment on promotion of the product no i mean how you cannot bypass the uh, promotion required for the product no hmm. but True. making a better product or service is entirely dependent on understanding the uh, user customers needs yeah yeah uh also uh one of the one of the points that you had uh, spe- specified in your presentation for the last mile uh, yeah. connect last mile uh, connect yeah so so here uh, some some points on the psychology of the customer and also psychology of the business promoters could you throw some light on that yeah so that मेनी टाइम्स आपला ऍटिट्यूड काय असतो आता हे आम्ही काहीतरी बनवलं आहे ते आता कसं विकायचं इज अ क्वेश्चन दॅट वी ऑलवेज आन्सर ऑलवेज ऑलवेज वी ट्राय टू फाइंड अन आन्सर बट दॅट वेन दॅट युजर फर्स्ट माइंड सेट कम्स फ्रॉम द प्रमोटर देन स्टार्ट चेंजिंग असं एक एक थॉट प्रोसेस असतो ना जनरली वॉट हॅपन्स इज इफ यू ओनली थिंक फ्रॉम युअर साईड तो यू विल add on your produce prejudices to your yes. thought process absolutely yeah. so that you you need a third person or you need a customer's uh, uh, yeah. desire and needs to be analyzed yes 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 yeah acha one question from uh, sunil desai uh, he says excellent presentation do you have any suggestion or some training programs for freshers and youngsters from our uh, so that they can move towards innovating and entrepreneurship uh, any sorry uh, training programs or uh, that you would want to suggest for youngsters yeah 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 we i mean we conduct a lot of training programs uh, at colleges and these startup incubators etc okay great so a lot of training programs happen yeah, yeah, yeah. i personally also conduct a lot of uh, so you can just uh, plug your website so that people can just uh, visit that and should i type it in the 
yeah uh, uh, in the uh, zoom zoom na so you can screen share with that so that that is also visible okay, okay, okay. my website is potentials and possibilities.com sorry Uh, let it load they they will always have that uh, visual there it is so uh, another point is how okay yeah 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 hmm. okay so these are the offerings uh, on site and off site so on site i think you mean uh, in person yeah yeah i mean uh -huh. pre pre <laughs> pre oh, <yeah>. february times <laughs> old times history <laughs> okay <Yeah. laughs> उटक्यूशन yeah true 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 so uh, i mean uh, execution la there is no option but to be involved yourself uh, in the execution phase uh, try to keep the consultants out do it yourself mm. train okay. your people uh, because that's where at the execution phase you will come to know some of the bugs or you know glitches in your product or service and uh, you will be in a position to make it better uh, then uh, the business model that you have envisaged manje you know are you going to make the customer pay directly up front or will you sell it on a lease model or will you sell it on pay per use model or pay as you use model he sagla adhi vichar karayla pahije based on the customer's understanding like for mm -hmm. example ata today we are facing a customer who is cash strapped barach lokanche companies band jhale ahet industries jobs gele ahet pay cuts jhale ahet which means people are grappling with their budgets correct mm. uh, so they want something of the same standard and quality but at a lower uh, upfront cost mm. so in that case uh, like you know he ata gele 3 4 varsha mi bagto hai furniture ki ek company hai furlenko manu Mm hmm. They sell. They don't sell furniture. They just give it on a monthly rental. Hmm. मतलब you you don't buy that furniture, especially अरे hey, people you know the youngsters who move from city to city. Hmm. It is very convenient for them. So point is that their acquisition cost goes down, and they are able to use good quality furniture also. Yeah. so this is like pay as you use kind of a model manje ata if you are selling furniture at the old style of you know he gheun ja ani mala sagle paise dya that is going to go away because hmm. we have a customer who doesn't have that much cash now yeah so, but so, then you, we are waiting for ikea to also launch at the same time <laughs> yeah true. so so, so you know, there are uh, two different levels of uh, almost all business yeah but ikea also will probably uh, have to think about something different no because now times are really times yeah. have changed uh, customers are, are willing to kind of push their unnecessary expenses further so asha hmm. acha made unless we make it lucrative without dropping quality yeah huh? Mm hmm hmm hmm. That's the way to survive. Also, pay as you use, pay per use, you know those kinds of things. Uh, and what are your thoughts now? Uh, the government is trying to uh, inculcate, not just promote, but also inculcate the spirit of entrepreneurship in uh, all communities and all uh, citizens. Yes. So how how do you feel as a community? We can benefit, or what kind of uh, let's say. You, 
you are starting up what kind of support would you want from your community or what these basic things should be provided pinchna ek atal innovation mission manun scheme hai atal innovation mission ha tacha khali they have they are setting up a lot of these so to say called incubators so if as a community you can give them some space they have certain space requirements or whatever whatever infrastructure requirements they give a grant government hmm. gives a grant to promote entrepreneur to promote actually product development they actually they, they give money for setting up laboratories and you know things like that and also then you can create a mentor network who can help hand hold these entrepreneurs uh, in in their quest for expansion or in their quest for starting up and uh, there is good amount of funding coming from the government so hmm. if as a community uh, somebody takes the initiative of you know uh, forms a panel five six people come together and actually uh, explore these government options it is it is this is happening quite free flowing hai matlab typical hmm. bureaucracy cha khali nahi hai okay yeah, i'm seeing in the last five years at a lot of places uh, outside colleges also outside universities also these private incubators hmm. have come up, which have been backed by this atal innovation mission good so we can we can think of that that is a very interesting point yeah. a specific question rajiv savant asked from bangalore what is your suggestion in aerospace sector where we do not have any rights to change any product specifications i think yeah. this is a very specific question yeah. but then uh, there are standards and specifications because of the high level of technology that is yeah that is required for machining or for manufacturing those and i think innovation part will be a little difficult for smaller players but on a if, if it is a collaboration or if the, it is like a, a hackathon or maybe something like that then they can come together to explore those ideas yeah true because finally uh, that aerospace final customer is will always remain out of your reach right yeah 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 <laughs> no but maybe maybe like have a hackathon and yes. then uh, yeah. uh, with the new changes in yeah. the drones or something absolutely. they can yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. so collaborate so, discuss and then yeah. innovate on those yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one question from uh, sneha from lonavala what she is asking is uh, if suppose xyz product is available in the market and we are thinking of launching the same product Mm. uh so how do you do a research about one uh how our pro- product can stand out differently than the other uh, competing product and how much uh, two is how much demand the same product uh, has in the market mm. and how to uh, research about the faults in the other uh, competitors products uh faults uh, should not be a problem in the sense that you go to the customers of your competition and ask them mm. and find out what their issues are so unless we meet interact with the users we are not going to get that information mm. uh, second point was market demand market demand uh, i mean this is based on the numbers whatever are there in the market there are sources mm. to give you that number various websites various reports uh, you know these india statistics reports and things like that should give you that information mm. and to the first point i forgot uh well, going back to the research i think those are secondary sources i think uh, uh, if if she is thinking of uh, launching a competing product she should also uh, spend some time on primary research yes absolutely that's what i meant that go to the users who are mm. using the, your competitors products and mm. please try to differentiate something or the other you will get some ideas you know mm. do some benchmarking the- exercise with the existing uh, product and see what the customer is wanting but mm. is not being solved by the customer by the by the competitor yeah. that's where you will differentiate what is the point in just uh, replicating what competition is doing yeah so this back uh, goes back to her first point of uh, how does she differentiate her product from the competitors yeah yeah uh, uh one open question from uh, atul rani from pune what he is asking is uh, why we do not see much innovation happening in india as an expert in this field uh, i think you would be the right person to throw some light on this topic <laughs> i have very strong views about that 
and i hope i don't rub uh, some people the wrong way but i feel uh, uh, we even in this it space that we say uh, we have been uh, number one wagere 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 but if you really see uh, we are uh, back end process efficiency guys we are not product guys in the it space very few products have come out from the indian space uh, if you actually check out take up some balance sheets of various uh, indian companies you will mm. find the r and d expenditure is abysmal is very low uh, mm. and much much lower than the global standard uh, thirdly uh, uh, also of course this is not just to uh, uh, in the indian context but i feel uh, this american concept of esops employee stock mm. options hmm uh the chance kya hota ki to whoever the ceo has a 3 year or a 5 year tenure and that person's entire focus is on uh, jacking up the sh- share price in those 5 years so that when mm. his uh, stock options vest he or she gets maximum benefit now st- stock prices depend on uh, generally on the revenue and profit mm. so revenue manje becho 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 sell 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 that is the attitude yeah. and profitability jack up karala cut cost cut cost cut cost so cut cost where r and d gets the first cut chop so then first chop so mukte you know then the whole attitude is uh, uh, living from quarter to quarter target sales sales targets uh, which is uh, i think that's what happens plus i feel apla kade i mean we have been brought up in a in a what do you say Uh, a mindset of scarcity right hmm lagade shambhar seats astil tar tyacha sathi 10 lakh lok apply karta so thodi shi risk taking ek attitude pan apli lahan pada pastach kami jali hmm and also a point when when tumi uh, jeva mantla na esops i think in india uh, still a lot of promoters are little fearful of losing control or diluting their uh, stake What yeah. would you? What would that you say? True. That is true. That is true. Apart professionalizing, low car karat ne. Another question from uh, Sharmila Rani uh, from Pune. Uh, she says, "Thanks for the awesome talk. Uh, for those of us who are from the service uh, class, how would you? Uh, how uh, how could we venture into this sector of entrepreneurship and not fear the risk of failure?" i think this risk of failure is uh, a underlying current in almost everyone's mind yeah. i mean risk of failure is always there hmm. how do you minimize it is the question by doing a proper research before entering into a space hmm. proper need analysis then uh, whether your product or service is a good fit with the market need or not hmm. by mm-hmm. doing that thoroughly uh, you can reduce the risk but yeah. risk will always be there true risk is always there present in all yeah. almost everything but at the same time if you notice a linkedin platform all of us are familiar with the linkedin platform correct yeah so uh, you know some research i was reading about a year back huh? not during this uh, pandemic corona pandemic but a year year and a half back mm. the number of jobs that people get out of get from the linkedin platform in companies hmm. is actually reducing as compared to the number of freelance assignments that people are getting through linkedin hmm 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 now that is uh, an insight which which makes me realize that uh, the uh, self employment even on linkedin platform is kind of getting more traction than conventional jobs hmm so, so so the job market is going to get tougher and tougher like how they say the gig economy ah uh, yeah yeah the gig economy absolutely right so so how can you capitalize on your personal skills that you acquire and how can you keep on acquiring new skills is the is the game for you that is very true because uh, as you the 90s you had this uh, analog digital Yeah. convergence yeah Tw- 2000s it was all digital and now uh, for a technology be a technology to become obsolete it just takes a couple of years absolutely you have to keep on so what are your thoughts how how best do we go forward innovate 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 
आई आई थिंक अपस्किल 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 और रिस्किल 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 नॉट अपस्किल बट रिस्किल यू नो काय आता सडनली काय चेंज होतं मार्केट मध्ये यू नेव्हर नो आय मीन वी नीड टू बी अँटिसिपेटिंग दिस थिंग आणि टुडे देर आर लॉट ऑफ ऑप्शन ऑल्सो ऑनलाईन कोर्सेस आहेत हे आहे ते आहे टू कॅन यु नो टू बी अब्रेस्ट विथ ऑल दॅट इज हॅपनिंग and to risk kill yourself so i i think that old model of ha ek degree getli ani tech karto hai te gela i don't think that will survive true 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 so for, sorry yeah so looks like we have covered uh, most of our questions uh, so dr dargalkar is there anything uh, specific you would want to cover before we wrap up not really i think we have covered everything <laughs> okay <laughs> great so uh, a special thanks to dr dalgalgar for his valuable time and great insights yeah. we would also like to thank uh, santosh takale of dg neuro summer of uh, b2b communication and An- arvind of uh, digital info media for all the back- backend support and a big thank you to everyone who joined we appreciate you being here uh, please uh, do check out dr dalgalgar's book it's logical innovating profitable business models it is available both on amazon and flipkart and uh, thanks again for joining us today best wishes and good health thank you very much thank you very much kaustu pleasure being here thank you excellent Deepak. very very interesting talk thank you yes yes very very insightful and interesting thank you bye thank you so much so nice Achha. of uh, 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 you a little uh, message to all the viewers ho aaj so amgel webinar jo zalo it is recorded आणि आम्ही तो युट्यूबर अपलोड करतले तो तुम्ही तो व्हिडिओ परत पळया लाईक करा शेअर करा आणि चॅनल सबस्क्राईब करा नमस्कार थँक्यू सो मच ओके टिल नेक्स्ट टाइम